Joe, do you know about Grot? Grot? Yes, from 1997. I was around in 1997, but it doesn't mm. ring a bell. Oh, I was technically alive as well, but I was in France and a child. Uh, Grot was uh, Get Rid of Them, uh, which was the first kind of nationally organised tactical voting campaign in Britain. The thing is, they had a list of 20 seats that the Tories could feasibly lose if, you know, Lib Dem vote, traditional Lib Dem voters would lend their votes to Labour and vice versa. And they published that basically in newspapers. They put out lots of ads, etc. Um, and apparently that made some change. So so I think, um, and I, I can tell you, I can tell you're making a face, but tactical voting in general... Uh, in 97, uh, apparently gave the Labour Party between 9 and 14 extra seats and the Liberal Democrats between 10 and 21 extra seats. You're making a face again. And we'll talk about that later. Um, but, but no, so, so I think, you know, 97, apparently, according to serious stuff I read, tactical voting kind of came into being. And then and then my other thing, so the like 2001 election, which is perhaps less interesting but funnier, uh, there was a piece in The Guardian um, in 2001 saying, internet literate voters have at least half a dozen websites giving a breakdown of party strength, some even offering to facilitate a swap of anti-Tory votes. Um, then noting Riley, the kind of people likely to use the internet are probably already fired up and motivated to vote tactically anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different time back in uh, back in 2001. In it fact, uh, and it's funny you should uh, you should ask because yes, the first interview I ever did on TV mm. was to discuss internet websites and their uh, uh, and particularly how it links to politics. And so uh, political parties websites interviewed by Rita Chakrabarty on the BBC about uh, about oh. that. And that Paying was subscribers back... will have a link to the video. <laughs> that was back in 2001 where where it was this sort of strange uh, strange thing. What I would say is tactical voting is often seen and promoted as uh, as this really incredible thing. Mm. Usually by the people promoting it and who wish to claim uh, wish to claim importance. Mm. But having said all of that and we'll come on to the numbers behind it. But the reality remains that the margin of victory in some elections can be incredibly small. Yeah. Let's think about 2017. Mm. Theresa May, as we know, failed to get a majority. Yeah. Uh, amidst much uh, much controversy. But the difference for the Conservatives, getting mm. the result they did and getting a working majority mm. was 75 votes. Oh, that's a really fun fact. I like that. Now, obviously, those votes have to be apportioned in the right way, in the right constituency. Yeah. But nonetheless, 75 votes mm. changes the in- overall story of that election. Now, a working majority probably wouldn't have been actually that much use. Yeah. But nonetheless, it changes the overall story. So the margin of these things can be really, really small. And so, yes, maybe in individual instances, tactical voting can make a difference. But actually, when you look at the numbers, it gets more complicated than that. Mm. Oh, you're shocking us down, me, Joe. Uh, firstly, when you ask people about their views on tactical voting, you find around about sort of 12% of people say that they intend to vote, quote, tactically. Okay. You then have another... 10, 11% who say that they prefer another party, but it has no chance of winning in their constituency. Mm. In other words, tactical voting by yeah. another name. Combine those together and you get around about a quarter of people, if you're being generous, who are up for tactically voting. Mm. But here's where it gets interesting. There's a difference between actually wanting to tactically vote and then voting tactically. Mm. Because in order to vote tactically and... If anyone's interested in this, I will be presenting the findings at the Elections Public Opinion and Parties Conference in September, The uh, very much the, the Glastonbury of the political science. Yeah, I, I will be washing world. my hair, I'm very sorry. All right, anyway. Uh, and what we find in the research that we've done is there is a distinction between people having an openness to vote tactically and the information that they have. Mm. Only around half of people, 52%, for example, mm. can name who won in their constituency last time. So the most basic bit of information. Oh, yeah. Who won in the constituency last time around? Was in the party or the candidate name? As in the party. Oh, okay. Only around half of people can name who won in their constituency. Then fewer than one in five people, around 18%, can name who came first and second mm. in their constituency, which is information that you need. But you also need, of course, to know how close your constituency was last yeah. time. And so if you're doing that within 5% bands, mm. only 3% of people can name how close their constituency was broadly mm. and who came first and second. 
and I swear to God, this is not me being glib, but like, is it possible that they Googled it the week before and then just forgot immediately afterwards? <laughs> well, this this is the thing. That survey was conducted mm. back in October. Yeah. We're, re- we're rerunning the survey Ooh. Okay, maybe just, before, in just before the election mm. to, um, uh, to see how much information people have now on the new constituencies. Mm. So now that some constituencies have changed, in fact, very few haven't changed at all. Mm. Do they know who's first and second there? Because, of course, the campaigns try to inform you of this mm. and everything else. But then it gets complicated because the standing last time could be very different mm. from how things are now because how the polls have changed. Yeah. And so you have some campaigns using uh, using data from MRP surveys, which, as we've previously discussed, see previous episodes, are really not good on actual mm. constituency by constituency results and certainly not on estimates of share of the vote yeah and so i think there's a real question to be asked about whether those people who say they're tactically voting are actually voting in a tactical way Mm. or potentially making the situation worse just vibing it yeah exactly just Mm. just voting in a way that actually has no real Mm. impact on things at all Mm. 